Now, have we got any folk watching on Zoom this morning, John? Uh, yeah, the usual culprits, Iris, Faye, Ross and Margaret. Iris, Faye, Ross and Margaret. Okay, so we want to say a special good morning to you today. And Sarah and John, there you go. Look, it's getting more by the minute. <laughs> so good morning to you and we're glad that you're joining us and to everyone who's gathered here. And I know we've got a visitor with us this morning. So you're very welcome. And we hope that this time together will not just be something that edifies us, but something that actually prepares us to be God's people in the world in this coming week and into the future. I came across these words and I thought, that's actually not a bad description of why we get together on Sunday morning. We gather here to wonder at the mystery that gave us birth to find courage for life's journey and to listen for the wisdom that guides us in the quietness of this moment. That's not a bad reason for coming together on a Sunday morning, is it? Our next slide has our acknowledgement of country on it over the next two slides. So I just thought we might actually stand together and and read these words together, not the way that we normally do our acknowledgement of country, but let's just read these words together this morning. Stand if you're able. Okay. We stand and watch the waves rolling in, shaping the coastland. We look out and see the Darwell trees standing tall in field and bush. We walk this land that holds the footsteps of countless generations and we acknowledge the traditional custodians, the Jeringa people of the Yuan Nation and their care and connection to this country. Thank you. Please be seated. This morning we're going to think a little bit about houses, about the places that we gather, about our homes, about this place as a building that we gather in. And perhaps here's something of what God's word has to say to us about that. And my device has just decided that it's going to close itself, so that's not. Fortunately, one of our readings this morning comes from Psalm 84. And as I read that, I, I've got to say, this is actually one of my favourite psalms. So I, I was very pleased to see it come up on the lectionary for this week. But as we read the first couple of verses of Psalm 84, this is what we find. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts my God and my King. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praises. And at the end of that little section of the psalm comes that word I guess we're familiar with, salah. And I saw someone once translate that as, just stop and think about that for a minute. And I think that's a rather lovely way as we're reading through the Psalms and you come to that word. Just stop and think about that for a moment. We're going to sing together. Um, oh, no, we're going to read this. You're right. Thank you, John. One of us is, a, is with it at least. I'll read the top bit and if you'd like to read the part that's in bold. Come with what you have. 
For you who grieve this day, know that you are invited to bring the broken pieces of your heart. Loved by one another, we discover God's love for us. Come with what you have. For you who come with gladness, know that your melody will find harmony. Lifting God's love for us, we are called to love him. Come with what you have. For you, weighed down by too many shoulds and what ifs, know that here you may lay down the burdens of guilt and shame. Love by one another, we discover God's love for us. Come with what you have. For you who have the answers, know that new questions await you. Accepting God's love for us, we are the Lord to love one Come with what you have. For you who come seeking, know that your questions are safe in the presence of God. Love by one another, we discover God's love for us. And those words have come from Catherine Hawker. We're going to stand now and sing one of Mar Marty Hagen's songs. All are welcome. Let us build a house. What kind of a house is it that we're building? That's what we're going to think a little bit about this morning. <laughs>
Marty Hagen has managed to capture a lot of images there of what a house can be, of what a home is. And while we might look at some of those words and think, well, we're not quite there yet, that's okay. Not quite there yet is a good answer. As long as we're still striving towards those things, not quite there yet is a good answer. Let's pray. Loving God, source of all that is, we have come from you and we come back to give ourselves to you again this day. Speak to us in ways we can understand, especially when our hearing seems to be very dim. Be the clear listening in our ears when it seems that what others say is lost in translation. Be in our hearts that we might see beyond the words that are said aloud. Be in our bodies that our touch may express your compassion. Be the action of our hands and feet this day so that we might not be all words. Be the sense in our reading that we might not be led astray. Be the words in our mouths that we might speak with integrity. Be the word in our very being so that trusting you, your word might not return empty. May we discover what makes for peace whatever our language, because you are the one on whom our peace depends. Amen. Gillian's going to come and bring us our readings this morning. Kings 8, verses 22 to 30, and then from 41 to 43. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, there shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes might be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays towards this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they play towards this place. Oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place. Heed and forgive. And then from verse 41. 
Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. And then from the New Testament, we're reading from John 6, verses 56 to 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Some interesting words there in our readings this morning. And I think I've probably said to you before, there are times when I come to the lectionary readings and think, couldn't I just pick where I'd rather be? Thank you. But somehow or other, God seems to always speak through those words that someone else has set down on the page and said, this is what you're going to read this week even if I struggle with some of them along the way. So for me, it's a bit of a discipline to not go, no, I'd rather be over there, um, to actually go with what's on the page and go, okay, well, come on then, God, what have you got to say to me this day? What have you got to say to us this day? We're going to sing again. We're going to sing number 430 in together in song if you wanted to follow it in the book itself although we're not actually using that tune. Um, these words certainly reflect that idea of Jesus being the word of the spirit working in us. So we're going to sing it to the tune of While Shepherds Watched Their Flocks by Night because it fits very nicely. But the words may be words that you are not so familiar with. So number 430 or it's up on the screen as well.
I was really struck by, th by that idea of God's house as we read it there in the Old Testament reading in 1 Kings. And then again, as it appears there in the psalm that I read a little bit of earlier. And it set me thinking about this house. I wonder if you were to stop and think about a word that you would use to describe this house. I mean, we often refer to the church, wherever it is that we gather, as the house of God. If you were to think about a word that described this place, I wonder what that word might be. Uh, sorry? Welcoming. Welcoming. Lovely word. <laughs> Friendship, family, caring. Well, it was interesting as I was thinking about you, because I have spent a little bit of time with you along the way, the word that came to my mind was belonging, the sense of, you know, I know how much you as a community care for one another. So for me, the word that came to mind was belonging. I wonder if we were to ask someone walking by on the street or if we were to ask someone who's been here in Bury all their lives, if we were to ask them for a word that described this house, I wonder what word they might use. When we look back through the scriptures, there are plenty of times when God says something about his house. His house is a house of worship. Well, yes, I think we'd, we'd tick the box on that and say, yes, this is a place where we do meet to worship God. And certainly that sense of connection and belonging We'd find places in the scripture where he talks about his house being a house of prayer. And yes, I think we could happily give a tick to that and say, yes, this is a place of prayer, yes. But it struck me that when we come to these verses from 1 Kings, that there's a couple of things there for us to notice too. You know, David had this vision and this heart for the house of God. He wanted more than anything to build a place for the Ark of the Covenant to be. You remember he says, why am I living in this nice house and, and, and God's in a tent? There was a good reason, but we're not heading in that direction today. So it was a vision in his heart that he needed to actually build a house that would be seen as the place where God was dwelling. But it wasn't his job. God had something else in mind. And when Solomon becomes king, one of the really startling things about Solomon is that he, he doubts his own ability to lead the people. He doesn't think he's the one, and he says that to God. I, just, just give me wisdom to lead your people. He doubts his own ability, and he knows that this was David's vision, and yet he's the one who's going to fulfil it. God used him in spite of the fact that he had doubts, actually perhaps because he had doubts, because when we have doubts, we have to rely that much more on God to lead us. And so the house was built. And in the verses just before what we read, we hear Solomon praying and the Bible records for us that the spirit of God filled the place. It was an amazing 
coming forth of God's spirit into that place. And so Solomon talks then about this house that has been built for God to dwell in. The house is, is like a beacon. Wherever you are, turn towards God's house. And when you turn towards God's house, you know that he's listening. That he's listening to you. This house now presented God's forgiving love to the people around about. As soon as you turn, God's there waiting with open arms to forgive, to bring you home. What are those words about home that we most appreciate? That sense of being able to walk in and take your shoes off and flop down on the chair and and it's okay. This is the place that you belong. Now, I was thinking over the last couple of days as I was preparing this, some of you might relate to this. As a child, I remember when Fig Tree Westfield was first built. And when they turned the lights on, which the lights aren't there anymore, I might add, but when they first turned the lights on on the top of Fig Tree Westfield, you could see it for miles because there wasn't anything quite like that in that whole area around Wollongong at the time. And so we used to live in Dapto at that stage and as you were driving into Wollongong at night, you could see this light on the top of Westfield, a big W, strangely enough. And I remember as a kid thinking it, it just stuck out so it was so obvious. And that's a bit like what, so, what Solomon's talking about with God's house. It's like something that you can see. Now, that's not physical seeing, although I guess it would have been fairly striking in its physical appearance too at that time. But this is something about our heart as well, that sense of knowing that God's house is there and turning towards us, towards it. Now, of course, we would say, well, yes, but we are New Testament people. We don't turn towards the temple in Jerusalem anymore as being the centre of things, and that's true. Because indeed, Jesus' death and resurrection, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We are the house of God. That might be a little bit uncomfortable, actually, because does that actually mean that my life should be like a beacon that helps other people to see God's grace, that my life should be something that helps people to be guided to God? Hmm. Turning to the psalm, the psalm talks about God's house being a place where even the weak and the fragile have a place find safety, are protected, even the tiny and the young. The sparrow finds a home and a place to lay her young at God's altar. God's house should be a house of protection. When we're going through times of difficulty, when we're going through times of battle and struggle and sadness and grief. God's house is a place where we find healing and restoration. So I guess for me this week as I've walked through these verses, there's been this double path happening of where I've kept coming back to this place 
to this building because here in the town, this building says something about God. And for you as a church, as the living building, because the building isn't just about the bricks it was made out of, but for you as a living building, what is it that this building is saying to the community? And I know that's something that you're thinking about and struggling with and trying to figure out what does that mean today? It's not just about what happened in the past. What does it mean now to be the house of God in this place? And I'm not in any way suggesting that there aren't several other houses of God in this place. What does that mean? And how do we work with those other houses of God? So that the community sees, ah, oh, that's what God's love's like. That's where I can find a place of safety. That's where I can find a place of restoration. That's where I can find out what it means to have peace in my life. I want to suggest to you that perhaps the word we need to think about when we think about the house of God is that it's actually a bit of a field hospital. Now, a field hospital can be a bit of a messy place and it can be a bit confusing because things happen and have to be dealt with right there and right then. But it's also that place where those who are wounded can find the help they need. How do we think of this house in the community and how does the community think of this house and what do we need to do to make sure that they know that they can find those things here and that probably doesn't happen by us staying safely inside the walls as you already know we actually have to be reaching out and finding connections So this week, as we think about what it is for this place to be a house of God and what it is for you and I to be the living, breathing, walking around, talking to our friends, house of God, how is God calling us to be in our world? so that he can bring the healing and restoration that our world so desperately needs today. Let's pray. Loving God, there are some difficult questions in the things we've thought about this morning. And you know for each one of us what the unique questions are that each one of us faces, given our particular circumstances, given our particular stage in life, given the burdens that we often carry, given the heartbreak that is often part of our story. How can we be the house of God here in this place, Lord? How can we let people know that it is in your love that they can find the meaning and purpose and healing and peace that they need? 
How can we do that in our own lives, Lord? There's no easy single answer to those things. But we want to be on the way to that place. We may not have the answers and we may not know exactly what the next step is, but, Lord, we want to be on the way to being a house of God where all are welcome, both in this physical place, in this living house of God, and in our own hearts and lives. But we know the only way for us to do that is for us to keep looking back to you and relying on you for guidance. So guide and lead us, we would pray. Amen. We're going to sing an old and familiar favourite, but there is a second verse that will come up on the screen that might have you going, where did that come from? Actually, there's a few people who won't be surprised. John will go, oh, that comes out of keeping the faith hymn book. I know where that came from. The um, hymn book that we use in the a lot of the uniting facilities is called Keeping the Faith, and it's unique in that it's a nice big print one that people can actually read the words of. Um, but there are some words in it that perhaps you don't find other places. And this one has a second verse to the song, A New Commandment. And I thought, as I sang it this week, I thought those are words that that fit very neatly with, with where we're going. So, yes, Peter, you'll be very familiar with singing this one too. Would you like to stand as you're able? We're going to sing A New Commandment. We come to that point in the service where we gather together our offerings. Yes, the offerings that help the ministry of this work to continue, the offerings that continue 
the work of the wider church, it is true. But sometimes that's the easy part. Sometimes there are offerings of our heart that God calls. And sometimes it might seem that's just a little thing to make that phone call, to give that time, to do whatever that little thing of love is that we might do. Those might seem like the small things, but who knows how much of an impact those gifts of love might have on the world. So we gather our offerings together. Loving God, all that we have is a gift from you. The very breath that we draw is your hand on us. And so we bring together these offerings, the tangible gifts that will make a difference to how things happen here in this place and in the wider church, but also those intangible gifts the change of attitude, the willingness to listen, that one little thing that you have been calling us to do this week that perhaps we haven't had time for. We bring those gifts to Lord and we ask that you will take all of these things Indeed, that you will take each one of us and use these gifts and us to bring your love to your world. Amen. Um, all right, I'm just doing prayers of the people and as is my usual custom, I, I'm reminded by a psalm or a hymn or something um, which leads me into um, my prayer <clears throat> and this one came to my mind which you probably all know so I'll just read the first two verses for glory Lord and honour to you Redeemer King to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring you are the King of Israel and David's royal son now in the Lord's name coming the King and Blessed One. The company of angels is praising you on high, and we with all creation in chorus make reply. The people of the Hebrews with palms before you went, our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. So dear Father, all we can do is give you our thanks and praises. You've made everything good in your creation. And if it were not for the clouds of sin, we would continue into eternity. We live, however, in a fallen world where things are not as they should. And we pray for the world that we live in. We pray for your blessings to be on those in power and authority, that they do so as accountable to you. For those who suffer for your sake in this world, the persecuted church, we pray for your protection and those who minister to them, such as Barnabas Aid. And we thank you for their examples to us. And we pray for us to be mindful of our impact on creation and to tread lightly on this earth, leaving nothing behind but footprints. And we pray for our church 
particularly those who suffer debilitating health problems and those who care for them. For those who suffer ravages of age and dementia, we ask that you guide them in the latter years of their lives. And we pray for our church leadership, church council and the upcoming AGM, that we can approach change in a loving, united way under the guidance of your spirit. And as we look around us in our community, we pray indeed that we can witness to them of your love and show by example. We thank you for opportunities to engage with our community through the Lending Library, Coffee and Friends, Craft and other activities. And we pray that these indeed will grow and develop in accordance with your blessings. And we look forward to Jesus returning to the sin-stricken world and we pray for his return soon. We ask this in his dear name. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, well, song this morning, is one called The Summons. Will you come and follow me if I call your name? Will you walk those uncomfortable paths? that you perhaps would rather avoid? Will you figure out what it means to be my love in the shops this week and in your kitchen this week and in the nursing home this week? And you know the places that you'll be this week. Will you come and follow me? Let's stand and sing.
rather lovely words to the old Scottish tune, mm. Kelvin Rose. Now, I thought this morning we would finish up with um, the blessing number 779 in the hymn book. It's one that I know you often sing together. Um, May the feet of God, you know the one. So I'm just turning to the words so that I make sure I've got it right. Lovely words, these. May the feet of God walk with you. Well, actually, he had no intention of doing anything else because wherever you go, he's there. Yeah. And may his hand hold you tight. Thanks, Dave. in peace to love and to serve this week. Amen. Amen.